all know how an interpreting event should be, but do we really know the truth behind it? Or the most important question, do we know what an ideal interpreter is? As stated by Bueller, an ideal interpreter is one who supplies an ideal interpretation in a given situation for a given purpose. In other words, she holds that an interpretation is good as long as it serves its purpose and makes it clear that the ideal interpretation cannot be an absolute value. The IKE, also known as the International Association of Conference Interpreters, have established a series of criteria for admitting colleagues to the profession based on the quality of interpretation and professional standards. To illustrate, the Jean Lafoe explains that according to the IKE, the information received by listeners should produce the same effect on them as the original speech does on the speaker's audience. At the same time, it should have the same cognitive content and be presented in the same type of language, in a way that is clear and precise. Finally, regarding the language and oratory quality, it should be on the same level as the original speech. Along the same line, the significant role played by listeners or users and their situational factors make interpreters put great emphasis on this. For example, it is clear that in a diplomatic conference, the attention should be put on all the nuances of words, while in a literary and artistic gathering, on the elegance of speech, and in a political assembly, the forcefulness of expressions. Regarding this, Seleskovich proposed a hypothesis in which he claimed that interpretation should always be judged from the point of view of the listener and never as an end in itself. Later on, Bueller designed a questionnaire of 15 criteria about linguistic and extra-linguistic interpreting features in which conference interpreters and delegates would assess sponsoring candidates for Ike membership. This empirical study reinforced the importance of user participation and concluded that there should be a differentiation among audiences. To test Bueller's hypothesis, Kurz created an empirical study in which delegates in a medical conference were asked to rate the first eight criteria given in Bueller's questionnaire as to their significance for the quality of interpretation. As a result, the study demonstrated that some of the criteria that were considered as highly important by interpreters, such as native accent, pleasant voice, and correct usage of grammar, were rated lower by the participants of the study. Apart from this study conducted by Kurz, two other investigations were made in which delegates were asked about the quality criteria applied to interpretation. For instance, Meek created a questionnaire to determine how 10 experts in medicine from different disciplines such as cardiology, urology, pediatrics, pharmacology, and others rated several criteria that were thought as relevant for the quality of interpretation. Guile conducted a case study on the context of an ophthalmological conference asking delegates to evaluate the quality of interpretation provided at that conference. In that case, they had to rate the following criteria on a six-point scale. First, the general quality of interpretation. Second, linguistic output quality. Third, terminological usage. Fourth, fidelity. Fifth, quality of voice and delivery. And sixth, main deficiencies in interpretation. As happened in Kirsch's study, one of Giles' discovery was that the criteria related to the quality of voice were considered less important by respondents than by interpreters. These first empirical studies among conferences participants demonstrated that not all the Ike standards in Bueller's study were related to user expectations. But one important thing is that these findings should not be generalized since it may be expected that different groups of end users have different needs and expectations. After that, as a way to test this hypothesis, a comparative study which involved different groups of users was conducted. A bilingual study between English and German whose main aim was to discover if there was a difference in the ratings given by conference interpreters, delegates, and users along with how important was the situational context in conference interpreting surveyed four subjects to compare their answers. For this study, Bueller's questionnaire was used, which included native accent, pleasant voice, fluency of delivery, logical cohesion of utterance, sense consistency with original message, completeness of interpretation, correct grammatical usage, and use of correct terminology. It was demonstrated that interpreters gave the highest rating among the subjects, followed by the Council of Europe, 
medical doctors, and engineers. After analyzing the results, it was found that among the eight criteria, sense consistency with original message obtained the highest rating without much fluctuation from the subjects, except for the European Council delegates who gave more importance to correct terminology. On the contrary, native accent ranked the lowest. Another significant result was that the second most important criteria, logical cohesion, differed more than sense consistency among the four groups. When you look at all the combined rankings, use correct terminology gets ranked third, which is an unexpected result due to the belief that interpreters and medical doctors would put a higher emphasis on it than CE delegates. To conclude, it can be said that this study among three different user groups yielded different evaluation profiles. While there was fairly high agreement by all groups on the importance of some of the criteria, conference interpreters and users, as well as different user groups among themselves, differed in their assessment of other criteria. The demands on the quality of interpretation expressed by the Ike interpreters in Bueller's survey were generally higher than those obtained from delegates participating in the presented investigation. The findings confirm the validity of the theories that view translation and interpretation as an intercultural communication process and emphasize the importance of situationality and communicative context. They clearly show that the target language receiver or listener must be seen as an essential element in the process.